to exalt his wonderful holy name. To God be the glory. This is second Sunday and second Sunday of the month. We honor it as our ladies Sunday or women's Sunday. And usually, which was initiated by our leader, uh, Sister Monet Barracks, is that we do a wellness session on our second Sundays. And I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but November is actually Diabetes Awareness Month. So I'm just going to use this time just for a few minutes just to go over some points when it comes to diabetes, in particular prevention of diabetes, and certainly um, encouragement to um, adhere to certain principles if you do have diabetes. So we often hear about the term diabetes, and we wonder what it is. And what it is is that your blood glucose, or blood sugar, is higher than it should be. What happens is when you eat, your food is converted to glucose or sugar, and that enters your bloodstream. We need an a um, hormone known as insulin, which is created by the pancreas, which is going to convert that sugar that you just ingested into energy. When it comes to diabetes, there is often a deficiency in that hormone known as insulin, or if you are making insulin, your body is not using it properly. So it's really important that we exercise a lot of discipline if we have diabetes and also to prevent diabetes because we don't want to put too much pressure on our pancreas that may not be working as it should. So again, we have insulin, a very important hormone that converts the sugar that we eat into energy so that we can execute our bodily functions. So there are a few types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, often diagnosed in childhood, but even we're seeing a later onset of type 1 diabetes nowadays, but that is when your pancreas doesn't make any insulin whatsoever. So those who have type 1 diabetes often rely completely on insulin. They have to give themselves insulin continuously throughout the day to keep their blood sugar stable. Type 2 diabetes, much more common, and that is often diagnosed at an older age, but that is when your body isn't using the insulin that it normally makes properly. We also have gestational diabetes, which is diabetes, just like it sounds, diagnosed in a pregnant woman. And lastly, prediabetes, which I've spoken on before, but do remember, prediabetes is preventable diabetes. So if your blood sugar is high, but not high enough to be qualified as a diabetes diagnosis, you're known as prediabetes, sometimes a borderline diabetes you might hear that term also used. So really time to be very intentional, very proactive, eat healthy, exercise, so you don't ultimately develop diabetes. So sometimes we have symptoms and it's easy to ignore these symptoms, but in particular, you may notice you're urinating often. So your body is trying to get rid of that extra sugar through your urine. You often feel thirsty. You may be feeling hungry even though you just ate. Also, we call them three polys. Those are symptoms of diabetes. Blurred vision, so if your vision starts to be a lot blurrier than it is used to being, then that could signal diabetes. Being very fatigued, again, your body's not converting its food source into energy, so you have no energy. Also, if you notice you're getting infections that are taking a long time to heal, that could also mean that you uh, have diabetes. Do keep in mind that bacteria love sugar. So bacteria thrives in a very sweet environment, so the more sweet your blood is, let's say, the more greater risk that that bacteria won't go away and will stick around. So again, if you're having infections that are not healing properly, not healing as quickly as they should, or you're having infections often, that could be a sign of diabetes. Weight loss too, again, to the point that you're peeing out or urinating out your extra sugar, that's also a sign. And if your diabetes has really progressed, you may notice that you have tingling pain and uh, sensation in your feet, your hands, that's often diagnosed as neuropathy, that too could be a sign that you're uh, developing your diabetes or that you've had it and it just has not been officially diagnosed. So very important. Um, one thing too um, with diabetes, and I don't know if this may help somebody, but if you notice um, that you're urinating often and around your toilet bowl it's a little black and we might think, oh, that's like some kind of, you know, fungus, or, but it really could be from the sweet urine that you're urinating into the toilet bowl that also could be causing the toilet bowl to turn a blackish color. So do keep an eye out for that as a sign that you may have diabetes and that you need to be seen by your doctor immediately. In terms of how to stay healthy, certainly eating healthy, eating smaller portions, 
a proper healthy plate, which is described as a half a plate of vegetables, a quarter plate of protein, and a quarter plate of starch. Oftentimes we do the reverse, and half of our plate is the starch, but really half of the plate should be the vegetable, whether it's raw or cooked. We also want to be active, so exercise at least 150 minutes a week of what we call moderate intensity exercise. So it's difficult to talk while you're exercising. Um, that's encouraged. Certainly if you're taking medications, to take them as prescribed. If you're asked to monitor your blood sugar, just to see if you are developing high blood sugar, do that as well. Certainly if you have diabetes, make sure you're monitoring your blood sugar as instructed. Also, it's important to have a sick day plan. So if you have diabetes, you wanna have a plan that you've come up with with your doctor or your provider as to how you're gonna handle when you get ill while you have diabetes. Very important to check your feet regularly, as I had mentioned earlier. Sometimes the sensation in your um, extremities, whether it's your fingers, your feet, may not be as good as it once was. So you could be at greater risk of getting an infection, in particular a foot infection. So sometimes with diabetes, because of the nerve damage, you may step on something and not even know that you stepped on it and that you injured yourself. So if you have diabetes, very important that you check your feet every day. Just, you know, you want to check the bottom. If you have a mirror, use that mirror, put it under your foot just to see if there are any injuries. Very important also to maintain your teeth, wellness of your teeth, so brushing every day, seeing the dentist. Also, an eye exam is encouraged and recommended at least once a year, and it, certainly the immunizations, whether it be the yearly flu, and now we have the COVID vaccine. So I hope this information has been helpful. Hosea 4, verse 6 reminds us that God's people suffer for lack of knowledge. So I hope that this information can help you to make better decisions, whether you don't have diabetes but maybe have a family history of diabetes. Very important to find out if your parents have it, if your grandparents had it, so that you can make the necessary adjustments in your life so you don't ultimately develop it. Certainly if you have diabetes now, not a death sentence. I work very closely with diabetes patients who through discipline and taking their medications as prescribed, they come to me on a high dose of insulin, and I'm even often able to get them off of insulin by adjusting their medications, and them also being very proactive, very um, disciplined in what they eat, and also being very active. So we praise God as we look outside. You know, it's fall, but especially in the summer in this area, we can see the produce that God has allowed for us to indulge in and to enjoy. So we want to eat those kind of foods, the fruits and the vegetables, and try to stay away from the packaged foods. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So um, at this time, we're going to transition to the Word, and I'm going to call on my husband, Pastor Jones Edwards, and he will introduce the speaker. Praise God. Bless the Lord. And you stand right beside me, um, yes. <laughs> Sister Melissa Edwards, and thank you very much for that wonderful presentation and uh, you have done a good job uh the lord is good and we are worshiping under the theme today jehovah gyro and we know that jehovah gyro means that the lord will provide Praise God. Thank you, and lord. Uh, guess what <laughs> we are a young baby ministry and we were at um, our conference um, yesterday, our regional conference was a lovely conference, and we were blessed by God all through the conference. And there was a, a very special gentleman that I have run into before, and I have run into him again. He's from the Church of God of Prophecy, and he goes by the name Minister Desmond. Yes. And his wife is in the house. Yes. So I believe that the Lord who do provide, provide a rum in the ticket to preach his word. And I'm going to be praying and then my wife is going to be introducing you at this time. But just let me pray at this time. Eternal God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for this morning you allow us to gather together in the house this morning many are your blessings we believe that you are indeed jehovah jireh 
the Lord who provide for his children. Right now, I pray that you will supply a word to your people, those who are watching through social media. And for them who are here, I pray that your words will come with power and clarity and authority. I pray for your man servant as he, as he come to this podium. I pray that you will give him utterance and umption at this time to speak your word. We commit him in your care in the name of Jesus. Yes, praise God. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. And the next uh, teaching, speaking, preaching word that you'll be hearing will be coming from our um, guest and we're so happy and so thankful to God that he and his wife are here. Brother Desmond Fahey and his wife, Sister Nina Fahey, they come to us from Washington, D.C., but they are worshiping at the Baltimore Church under the leadership of Pastor David Weir. They have been married for 43 years. Praise God. Such an encouragement to us who are newly married. And they have four beautiful children, four blessed grandchildren. Uh, Brother Desmond is a retired military, so we thank him for his service to this country and his service to the Lord, most importantly. We commit both of you into the care of the Holy Ghost, and we ask God to use you as he would. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Who? I greet you in the name of Jesus, Pastor. Um, I thank God for you. I met you at the previous conference, and we had a very short meeting. And then I met you yesterday, and he preached to us. He was all over the place. I mean, physically. <laughs> like, wherever he was, it was like he was on holy ground, you know? I'm telling on you, brother. Okay? Truth? Truth? <laughs> Amen to that. So God bless you. Um, you took a risk. I, I talked to you in this morning, and you took a risk. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit. You see, God has a word for us from the very beginning. Before we were even born, before we were even became, became human, God thought of us. He says, let us come, sweetie, make man. And two things, in two things, image and likeness. You see, I believe whatever God said he did, he did it, and it was good. So when you see me, you see the image and likeness of God. You see, not this figure, but it's the Jesus Christ that is in me. And that would, that's where I would say, hallelujah! Because Jesus Christ is in me. I believe that. Saints, right here and online, I believe that Jesus Christ is in me. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27 says, Christ in you is the hope. Yes. Yes, Lord. Our hope is that Christ is in us. Yes. I'll give my wife an opportunity to greet you. Praise God. My greeting will be in a brief little song. We have come this far by faith Leaning on the Lord Trusting in His holy word He never fails me yet. Oh, 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 can turn around. Oh, we come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. On the Lord, 
trust in any holy word. He never failed me And just the other day, I heard a man say, he didn't believe in God's word, but I can truly say that the Lord has made a way. And he never, never failed me yet. Hallelujah, we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word, he never fails us yet. Praise God. I want to give God honor and praise and thanks to him and thank him for making a way for us to be here. And I thank God for the direction of the Holy Spirit, the, how he directs us here. Because to be honest with you, we should have been somewhere else. But um, being obedient to my spouse in the direction that he wanted to leave, so I am here. Amen. And um, the young lady that was up here, the pastor, is that your wife? I was sitting back there. I don't know uh, where she's, that who or her family, but she looks so much resembling of myself okay. and some of my family members. Amen. So I, I didn't get a chance to tell her that, but you never know what God has in store for you until when you go. And you always see something that God um, placed in front. Yes. And let's see what he has placed at the table for us this morning. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, my dear. Um, um, it's been 43 years of, of marriage, and I, I just got to tell you that um, um, it's the challenge to, to remain married. Just, I'm telling you the truth, the very truth. Just as I get up in the morning and, or whenever I awake from sleep, my mind has to go to Jesus. My mind has to go and say, I'm going to love God again today. I'm going to serve God today. I'm going to remain married today. I'm going to love my wife today. Amen. That's just the truth. You know, so um, if you ask me the success in being married for 43 years, going on 44, it's that when I open my eyes, God helps me to love my wife again Amen. today or right now. You see, without Jesus tells us, without him, we can do nothing, Amen. nothing at all. I believe that too, yes. that without Jesus Christ, I am nothing. Amen. But you see, we started from Genesis when I began to read the word of God for myself and not learn my theology or base my theology based upon what some Christian man or some Christian woman in choice church would say. And then I said, oh, that sounds so holy and so righteous. I'll base my theology based upon what I heard. Not that it's wrong, because as we know, Jesus sends the disciples out to tell people about him. Faith comes by hearing. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Without faith, impossible to please God. You know the word. Peter says to us, Peter says, 
I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Even though you know them, and even though you are established in the present truth, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of the word of God. Therefore, when I meet you, my brother and sister, I had better tell you about the word of God again. Or, Peter tells me, I am negligent if I don't tell you about the Word of God. We don't have time to take any other message to the world than the Word of God. No time for nothing else. None. We must tell someone you know, about the Word of God. You see, in the beginning, God says, let us make man in our image and likeness. Guess what? I believe that today. Not because you tell me, ooh, but because I read it for myself too. It's in the Word of God. You see, my dad used to tell me, he passed on um, 2020 at 93. Ooh, and you can ask my wife, separate us in another room, what is the main advice he'd give to us? Read the Word of God for yourself. Read. Read. Reading is fundamental to everything that we do. To any kind of understanding. Yes. I read in my mind. I see in my mind. I, my five senses are all up here. Touch, sight, smell, taste, and feel. Or whatever the other one is. Right? But it's all up here. When I see you, it's because my mind said, I've seen you before, and you look like that, and you look like this. You laugh like this, you laugh, or you laugh like you talk like that, you walk like this, and so on. That's how I know you as a human being. Oh, yes, sir. But God knows us in a way. You see? You see, remember when God made us, he, he said, let us make man. Man didn't ask God to make him. We didn't, ever, we didn't exist. And yet God thought of us. That's how much God loves you today. So much that he thought of you whew, before you even existed. In fact, think about this. We have the year 2021. Because Christ came to earth when Christ came to earth, it's uh, estimated at about 2021, in the year of our Lord. Anno Domini. In the year of our Lord, we get that. That's when Christ came. Listen, I was born in 1956. That's 65 years and one day ago, or two days ago. Christ had already died for me. You see, Christ said, someone preached it yesterday. I, I, I think this gentleman preached it. I come, I come, not for the sick. I, I'm, I'm sorry, not for the, the, the righteous, but I come for the sinner. My Bible tells me in Psalms 51 and 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So therefore, just as God thought of us in the, in the garden to create us in the beginning, he's doing this, actively seeking out the sinner. He isn't waiting back, waiting for us to decide to love him, decide to come to him. No, he's, in fact, can you think of a parent trying to save their child? Can you think, those of you that are parent, you do just about anything to save your child. You're knocking, Johnny, Johnny, Susie, open up, let me in. That's how desperate God is for us. For you. He did that for you. And for me, he died for you and for me. He comes knocking for you. He's, it's relentless. He doesn't let up. His seeking. You see, when I think I'm seeking God, I feel righteous, and I feel holy, and I feel real saved when I say the, that those are one of the phrases that we learn in church. The
the saved people would say that, and it sounds right. I'm seeking God. I now understand my seeking God begins at a certain point, and it stops. Because I have to parent. I have to husband. I have to father. I have to mother. I have to work. I have to sleep. I have to eat. I have to bathe. I have to do all the things that the body requires for me to live. We just talked about eating habits. I got to do it. So my body is desperately trying to save itself once it becomes the first thing I come out my mother's womb. The first thing they want me to do is suck in the breath. He's breathing. He's alive. Breathe, breathe. He's not breathing. You go frantic. The rest of my life, my body is seeking the next breath. It doesn't have time for God. My body is trying to survive. That's the mission of this flesh. Survival. Yes, it is. So therefore, God has a plan of salvation that says, Okay, you worry about keeping your body alive. I got this. Let me in. When I come in, I will wash you up, wash you up, wash you up. Make you brand new. No residue. He wash you up. We say that. Do we really get it? That when Christ comes in, that's what he does? He say he cleans us up? Yes, Do we really understand that? Do we really believe that? Because you see, that's the message we have to take to the world today. Jesus comes in and he wash you up. He wash you up. He'll make you brand new. Leave no residue. He'll wash you up. Christ does that for us. I don't have to wash myself. I'm going to fall short. I'm going to fall real short if I wash myself. Because I'm only going to wash myself when I have time. I'm only going to be righteous when I have time. I'm only going to feel holy when I have time. I'm only going to feel, feel faithful, have faith, when faith is needed. If you think about it. I, I'm too busy trying to sustain life. The Bible tells us everything that pertains to life and godliness, God has already taken care of it for us. Saints, we have to believe that. Amen. That's why we do this. We walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus gives the disciples an example of faith. You see, he sent them out to cast out, uh, I'm sorry, to proselytize the gospel message. And in doing that, they were able to save people, heal people, and cast demons out. Except this one fellow. This one guy, they couldn't. All of them tried, perhaps, sin individual. Let me try, let me try. I know Jesus. The other one said, let me try, let me try. And then they said, well, let's go together, 12 of us, and see if we can get this demon out. They couldn't. Jesus comes along, talks to the demon, leaves. We know the story. Well, I shouldn't say we know the story. That's the way the Bible story goes. The Bible tells it that way. And then the disciples in there, you could say shame, they get Jesus by himself and they said, Master, how come we couldn't cast the demon out of that fellow? And he says something about faith. And then he says um, prayer. And if you read in the Mark, I believe it adds fasting to it. So the fasting... I'm not going to speak about today. The prayer I'm going to talk a little bit about today and just mention it. We got to pray. We got to talk to God. But the faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Where does faith come from? Hearing, hearing the word. And listen, listen to this. When we receive the word, we receive Jesus because Jesus is the word. God is the word. So we have God in us. I think Emmanuel means God with us. Amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus promises the disciples, he says, wait here. Wait here in Jerusalem. I'll send you the Holy Ghost. I'll give you the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. When you have it, you will have power. That's what the Bible says. Saints, we have the Holy Spirit in us. 
You see, but the thing is, we try to make the Holy Ghost in us powerful. That's not even our job anymore. We try to make ourselves faithful or more faith as if there is a level or levels to faith faithful. The Bible tells us that um, every man is giving the measure of faith from Christ, from God. We are given that. So, with that, Jesus tells the disciples, remember now, like I am saying, like I'm saying to us, remember that faith in Hebrews 12 and 2, it says, looking to Jesus. I want to put a period after that. Saints, our, our charge today is to look to Jesus. You know why? Because he's the one that authors my faith and finish it. I used to think that I had to grow faith. I had to get faith. I had to find faith from somewhere. I had to be faithful and faithful like that Christian brother and that Christian sister. And that's really, really, really saved the person in the church. God is not a respecter of persons. He isn't going to save you more than he saves me. He doesn't play that. He's not like that. Whatever measure of faith God establishes in, his, in us through his son Jesus Christ, listen to me carefully, it's enough. Whatever Jesus establishes in us, it's enough. Here's how he tells the disciples that at the end. He reels them in. Come on, disciples, come on in. Listen here, listen here. Remember now, I author your faith. I'm the one that you heard my word. Jesus poured it into the disciples. He poured himself into the disciples. And then he sent them forward. This is a teaching moment or a teaching opportunity for the disciples. And for you and me. Because in John 17, Jesus prays a prayer that includes you and me. But he tells the disciples, look to Jesus. Because I am the one that authors your faith, not you. You, you see, saints, I feel now I have nothing to do with my faith. That's Jesus' responsibility. Not mine. I have no power to faith anything. My power, my righteousness, my holiness, and my faith is Jesus Christ. You see, the Spanish will call him Jesus Christo. The French, Le Jesus Christ. We, Jesus Christ, that's what my message to the world is, look to Jesus Christ. He will establish your faith. So now, whew, when I come to my brother and sister, I, I now understand what, why Peter ad charges us or, uh, or admonishes us, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them. And though you are established in the present truth. <clears throat> you see, Jesus tells his disciples, you see, let me show you how my faith works. Not your faith, my faith. Even if I, since I'm the one that establishes faith in you, even if I were to establish faith as big or as small as a mustard seed, it's enough. That's what Jesus is saying to the disciples, and now we, you and me, because I don't establish faith in myself. He said, if your faith is as big or as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains, buddy. You can tell trees to uproot itself. It'll get up out of the ground and go replant itself somewhere else. Sounds facetious. I tell you what, perhaps we'll have less earthquake if we Christians would stop trying to move mountains and leave the mountains alone. Because when you move them, where are you going to put them? So we know it's a, it's a, it's a um, metaphor that Jesus is using about the mountains, you know? We're trying, to, we're trying to do the heavy lifting for Jesus. And Jesus said, no, 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 stop, stop. That's my job. That's my responsibility. I've done all the heavy lifting for you, buddy. I've done it. I've done all the heavy lifting. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whew, this is where I want to speak in tongues. 
You know? Oh! Yes! Yes, yes. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. I've done all the heavy lifting for you, brother. God has done all the heavy lifting. Rejoice in the Lord always, the Bible tells us. And again I say rejoice because God has done all the heavy lifting for me. Rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. Rejoice because God has done all the heavy lifting for me. All the heavy lifting he's done for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So Jesus tells his disciples, per perhaps disciples, you left me out of the equation when you went to that one fellow. You went with your own strength. Your own power, your own might, trying to trying to cast demon out with your screaming and hollering, like I'm doing now. We we sometimes get up and we yell and scream, but I tell you, if you have the word in you, it's gonna come out somewhere and somehow. Oh, hallelujah! I used to have a pastor that used to do this, and I used to wonder why he do that. Now I feel my who when I have speaking the word. Sometimes I want to throw a fist somewhere. Oh, hallelujah! Ah. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus tells the disciples, you left me out of the equation. You know we solve for X, the variable, Jesus. Common denominator, Jesus. Equals, Jesus. Looking to Jesus. I don't watch a fate anymore. I don't even make myself righteous. I try to do that too. By doing things, work, by trying to work to be holy. Show, show you that I'm holy. Show her, him, show the church, show the world. Here's how I'm holy. Here's how I'm righteous when we do something like that. When we do those kind of things, that's, that's, that's a, a something that we do that has nothing with righteousness or holiness associated or attached to it. Our holiness, saints, comes from Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. Righteousness, Jesus Christ. Faith, Jesus. Faith, Jesus. Jesus stays on message, my brothers and sisters. He tells the folks, when they would challenge him, when the priest and the high priest and um, the governors and the emperors would challenge him, He'd always refer back to my father or the father. I'm only coming to tell you what my father has given me to tell you. I am only saying what my father has said for me to give to you. It was always the father or my father. Guess what? When we take the message of Jesus Christ, I mean, we take the message of the gospel, it's Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched. I have touched. You see, we, we think that I have touched. When I do this, I have to remember that God is right there, had been right there, talking to me, ministering to me, knocking on me right there. So when I think um, uh, I am seeking God, my seeking God pales in comparison to God seeking me. Very much so. In fact, like I said, my seeking God is only going to last for a time. My prayer lasts for a time. No matter how much I tell you I'm a praying man and I'm a praying person, my prayer stops. You better believe it. My reading Bible stops. In fact, we now talk about taking a vacation away from from preaching the word of God. It's true. We do that. I need a break because my, remember I said my body, this body isn't built to go do, do that. That's why Christ comes into us. Because our body isn't built to serve God. It's a war going on between the spirit of God in us and our fleshly body. It's, a, it's an all out war. It's an onslaught. Onslaught. Everything is firing back at the Holy Spirit. It ain't our responsibility anymore, saints. That's Jesus' responsibility too. My hope is built and nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. His righteousness, not mine. 
I don't have to be righteous anymore. I have Jesus. I don't have to be holy anymore. I have Jesus. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't have to try to be righteous anymore. I don't have to try to be holy or be holy again and holier again and faithful again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. It's 12, 11, brother. Have I gone over time? Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to, to encourage you at this point. We've talked about Jesus Christ. We've talked about faith. Righteousness, holiness. We've talked about God knocking at your heart's door. I, I offer you today online Jesus Christ, as I offer you in this congregation Jesus Christ. Peter tells the, disciple, Peter tells the, the, the gentleman at the gate, silver and gold have I none. But what I have... Ooh, who, like he tells a woman at the well, lady, this thing that I'm offering you, you'll never thirst again. You know, that's what I'm offering you today. Jesus. You see, if I offer you anything else, I have fallen short today because I didn't give you or offer you Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ, here's what I'd like for you to do with me. You can pray silently. You don't have to raise your hand. But we're going to say a prayer today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word coming to me. I thank you for your word covering me, for your word speaking to me, for me hearing your word and giving me understanding of your word. I've heard about your son, Jesus Christ, that is going to come into me, that is knocking at your heart's door right now and saying, let me in, let me in. He's desperately knocking because he really loves you. He knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you. He knew you individually. I offer you Jesus Christ today. If you accept Jesus Christ, say thank you, Father, for coming into my life today and, he, and washing me up, washing me up, washing me up and making me brand new. And God, I know, even though it might feel that I have some residue in there, that's your responsibility to clean me up from that too. And I believe you will do that. I accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, today. I need for you to say that. I accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God into me. God bless you. God love you. My saints, my brothers and sisters, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. We truly thank the Lord for sending, um, I use the term, a rum in the ticket. That's the, the theme that I receive sometime this week. And uh, the writer said, uh, sometimes we entertain angels unaware. So when you have visitor come into your house, it was a custom in those days that angel would have come in the likeness of man. And uh, you got to be careful or you entertain stranger because you might have an angel sitting among you unaware of it. We don't know everything that the Lord is doing. But we know that if we are obedient to his voice, then he will do the heavy lifting, as the preacher said. We don't have to always be doing the lifting. This little ministry is in a building process. We are just at the root, just digging the foundation. And as I have said a lot, we have a lot of moving pieces. And so we want our Lord Jesus Christ to be the center of our foundation. We must build on him. And whatever he will move out of the way for us to build on him, we are going to allow him to move what needs to be moved, shift what needs to be shift, shake what needs to be shake, and build what needs to be built. But we are not afraid, for Jesus is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know what I said? For I have touched the hem 
of his garment and his blood had made me whole. Thank you, Minister Desmond, for coming through in such a time like this. And we're going to pray that the Lord will have his way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe in God. I will not doubt him. Um, you know, um, I have a message to preach, but I'll preach it the next time. I'll preach it the next time. But, but Abraham and the lad was, went up to Mount Moriah. The Lord said to Abraham, half of the son that you love, and the mountain that I will show you. And Abraham obeyed God. Abraham moved by faith. And he carried the son up. And the son said, Father, I notice that you have wood. I notice that you have fire. I notice that you build halter. What me no see no sheep. So altar has been established, but it seems like there is no sheep. Abraham said, "The Lord Himself will provide." Oh, hallelujah! That sacrifice. And there comes a time when we need to know. All we need to do is to walk in obedience all we need to do is to walk in faith when you tell me that you were coming this morning i was excited but when you tell me that you have a word i hesitate and i start to think and i start to ponder and the lord take me back to this word that he gave me jehovah jireh the Lord will provide. Sometimes the Lord himself provide the sacrifice. And so you are the sacrifice to bring the word today. You are bringing forth the word and the word will not go back void. Thank you for bringing forth the word. God bless you. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for this day. For this is a day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for those who are listening, those that are watching through social media. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to reach us by your spirit, reach your people by your words. O oh God, for your words is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our part. We pray that souls will be born for your kingdom newness of life we pray for as we continue to go in the strength of the lord all right so we are going to be closing off our the side of our social media at this time but thank you for watching and thank you for listening at this time as we continue in our service i hope you'll continue to you know, worship with us as we go along. God bless you. Amen. Okay. So this time we are going to turn to Sister Tisha. We're going to be collecting an offering.